Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Locks Foundation Disc Golf Weekly Podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor. We're in uh, Fresno, California, right now. Dirty Fres. Chilling in a hotel bed <laughs> yet again. It is freezing in our room, so it's I'm under not the covers. That cold. It is so cold. It is 52 degrees. Mm-hmm. Um, this episode is presented by Flippy Disc Golf, so shout out to them. They're a huge reason we're on the West Coast. Shout out, Aaron. We've got one more day Gosh. out here. Um, tomorrow is our last full day, and then we fly home first thing Wednesday morning. I am ready to be home. If you thought the last episode of Grip Block was like borderline a little silly because we were sitting on the hotel bed, well, now it's been another week of us being out. It's here another on the West week Coast. of us on the road, so and it's just, nine o'clock West Coast time, which means it's midnight internal body clock time. You can't still you do that. You can it's been still do that. Days. It's been twelve days. <sighs> the Zoo Town Open went down this past weekend. Uh, we played a lot of disc golf. Well, we're gonna walk you through the disc golf we've played. Um, are the courses on the West Coast we've gotten to experience. Don't um, undersell it. It's the official West Coast Disc Golf Review. It's our official West Coast Disc Golf Review. Um, we'll talk through the Zoo Town Open results and also about Paul in Europe, a little Trevor's trivia, and then what we're going to expect at Dayla tomorrow, which actually when this comes out, you're probably watching it while we're at Dayla, being stoned by the locals. Mm-hmm. Like by throwing by stones. throwing of stones. Yes. yes. There yes. you go. I'm just gonna clarify that. We're probably being yeah. I, literally, someone came up to me at the course today or yesterday. It all blends together. One of the courses that we were at, someone came up and they were like, "Do you think they're gonna let y'all on the property at Daylot?" I was like, "No, I don't. I'll be surprised, but I'm hopeful. I'm very excited. Daylot's I'm the a course. Little scared. Daylot's the course. I think I'm most excited for on this whole trip. We haven't run into a mob yet. Yeah, I'm very excited to and play we've Dayla. Been in California um, now. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great time. Holy crap, I'm tired. Let's go over the Zoo Town Open. <laughs> Let's go over the Zoo Town Open results here. Um, the MPO only played two rounds. Round three got canceled due to weather. I hate that, dude. I hate when that happens too. It's um, a bummer. And you know, what I hate it the most. I hate it the most because Evan Scott probably had this thing locked up. Yeah. So Evan Scott took it down by four strokes through two rounds. Again, round three was canceled. This is his yeah. first silver event win of his Oof. career. What is that, Hunter? Where does a uh, two round silver event rank in your like? How much? How, what percentage of a win does that count as? Uh, on the pro tour? No, don't do that. Just zero. Just, okay. <laughs> Uh, as, as a win? Yeah, just as that a is, win. That is... Like um, if Pro Tour win quality is 100%. Pro Tour win quality is 100%. If like... A, if, so then yeah. silver zero because they're on different scales. Okay, just... just just where's a C tier on this scale? I see, okay, no, okay. G- give me, give if me the Pro bottom Tour, and top. If give Elite me series, okay, okay. Let's say majors let's say 100%. Majors 100. Where's a Elite C tier? Series is like 95 or 90. Okay, C tier would be like on this scale would be like 10 percent or 10 percent. So where's a silver event? Fit That's in? where I'm, I'm. I'm asking you. Where's a silver event and where's a two round silver event? So an elite. I would say normally a silver event probably comes in at like 50 percent. Okay, so if a silver event is at 50%, I would say a two-round silver event is like 40. Okay, I just was curious. 40%. I would give him like an extra bump and a couple percentage points because he, he was up by four. four. Yeah, it's not like It's he similar would... to when Big Germ won USDGC or when mm-hmm. Colton Montgomery won Waco. Mm-hmm. Big Germ was not up by four, was he though? No, but it was a major. Yeah, but I'm, I don't... I get. I don't. I almost credit it more being a silver series because you're not likely to choke away a silver. He was not likely to choke it away. Uh, Clay Edwards was in second place. At Winthrop. Um, he shredded AB though. AB and Ty Love were tied for third. Um, These Evan Scott. This are, isn't. This isn't going to be Evan Scott's only win in his career uh, of any caliber. The kid's good. He's like 18 years old. Um, so, yes, These it was silver a. Events it was kind of weird because like there's some dogs out there. And I don't know if they just go out there goofing around, but like there's some really good players. Well, Kevin that Jones aren't played the course these. blind. Well, I'm just saying like Gannon was there as Gannon, well. Gannon, yeah, I don't know. And Gannon we, was there. I know A B, I just read his name. Right. Uh, like there, Hammes was there somewhere. There's players there and um let's just look at the strength of field. Let's I mean, go no, I'm not saying like that. Stat Mando. The strength of field definitely wasn't good. I'm just saying like there are good players there, and I feel like the silver events sometimes they can just be kind of sporadic. Let's just go um Stat Mando field strength for 2023 MPO. Those two. And uh, oh, oops, swiped the wrong way. Couldn't have been strong. Uh, let's see here. I bet it's probably one of the weakest ones yet. What was this event called? The, the Zoo Town Open. The Zoo Town Open. It's definitely not that low down. <laughs> if it's on there, it would be up there. 
Discraft, Innova. It's because they have like all the so sponsors in there. there. Search Zoo. Zoo City opens on here. Zoo Town opens. It's not on here yet. It's not on there yet. It's that Mando, guys. Shot what Mando. happened? What the heck? It happened 48 hours ago. That's. Mm. Mm. You disc would never. Tough. Uh, I mean, anyways, Evan Scott, he played very solid, took down the silver event win. And you got to credit Evan Scott with a silver event win. What, regardless, you can put it with an asterisk, just like we always do with Big Germ's USDGC win. But both Evan Scott and Big Germ played the golf that they could play, and they won. Hey. Hey. So I mean, what are you, what else are they supposed to do? I mean, nothing. Yeah, they did. They did what was asked of the entire field, and they came out on top. On the FPO side, Kristen Tatar continued her dominance, won by four Duh. strokes over Missy Gannon, with Katrina Allen coming in third. I believe Paige Pierce was not out there. Correct. She was not. Holy cow! Dang, dude, you're struggling. She was not out there. Um, so just something to note. We're only one event away now. Well, like the next event, we get the return of Val Mandahano. Yeah, this upcoming weekend, DDL. the Dynamic Disc Open goes down, and that is the return of Val Mandahano. And it'll be very curious to see what form she's going to be in. We'll talk through all of that on the preview show. Yeah. Um, but to give you a little glimpse into where my mind's at right now, not really seeing her throw, I, I'm just expecting her to kind of come in and be a top, like, seven or eight. This is where I'm kind I of expecting would, her to I be. I would expect. I, would, I don't think that she'll quite come in and just like compete for a win right off the bat. Especially, I don't think DDO is super her strength as a course. Um, yeah. Well, as a tournament, I guess I should say, because there's multiple courses. Um, but I, I still think that she's going to be good enough. It'll be interesting to see what this injury has done, but I still think she'll be good enough that she'll be able to get in there, make some noise, and like make her presence felt revenge in the game. FPO field. Is it a revenge game? Against what? DDO. Against Dynamic. Oh, she left. It could be kind of a revenge game. It could be a revenge game. Um, be something to look at now. Last very week, very statistically correct. Last week we were talking about Paul's start in Europe. It did not go as planned. Oh my gosh! I can't do it. I'm so tired. It did not go as planned. Um, for really anyone, no one expected what happened. Paul did not play very good at all. Told us nothing about the European Open or the European field over there. And they ran to a um, new European tour. Well, he this was always a plan. So he moved from the I, European Pro Tour to the Euro Tour. I didn't realize that was happening. Yeah, so the Euro Tour um, is what I think Paul's playing on from here on out until the Pro Tour comes over there. He won this one by eight strokes over Jakub Simerad. Who's a beast. Um, and Scott Stokely came in third. Shout out, Scott. So Shout out, Scott Stokely. That Silver man Lot old. came in fourth. And he, yeah. That f- this field looks a little bit less recognizable, but Jakub Simerad is, is legit. He's very legit. He beat him by eight, so he played well. Yeah, so Paul played well. It's, when you factor in the first week and the second week, it again tells us nothing about the European field. Does in my go, opinion, I, I hope we go. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not really learning much. I, I want him to go back to the other field. The Nokia Open is what went down in the other field. We had Lori Lettinen taking it down, um, with Daniel Davidson and Mari Vilman tying in second, one stroke behind him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. The tour hopping. He's yeah. But I think he stays on Euro Tour. You're a disaster. I'm dying. I'm dying from here on out. I think he stays on Euro Tour. Um. So West Coast disc golf is what has caused my exhaustion. Over the last twelve days now, we have played, um, what is it? Eighteen rounds of disc golf over the last twelve days total. I have no idea. Six monthly matches and twelve bogey row battles, and we have two more There's bogey no row way battles to go. Six monthly matches, surely not. Oh, we were done them all. We were supposed to play six have and fourteen. We? we played. We played one in Kennewick, Kennewick, Washington, and then Twin Falls, Idaho. Twin Falls, and then Cedar Cities, Utah. Yeah, and then um, Hualapai. Yeah, and five. So we played five. We played five. Yeah, we were supposed to play six. Oh, what are your, yeah, I don't know, th- I, well, no, Kenna we had to take one out, remember? We yeah, that was the seventh. We were going to do 21, originally. Well, maybe we're, well, I don't, <laughs> there was no other ones on the schedule, we did so. Kennewick, so we flew in. We got to get back out there. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> we did Kennewick, Washington. Yeah, no, we definitely didn't play any more than the ones you just named. And then, but that, I mean, that was from Washington, we were going to Boise, Idaho from there. 
I could read it to you straight off the itinerary. And then we went down in Idaho. It makes it a lot easier for you. Went to Utah, down in Utah, okay. over to Nevada. We've got one monthly match, two monthly match, three monthly match, four monthly match, five monthly match. That's it. Oh. So I lied. It was never. Man, we're kind of weak. We're only doing 19 rounds of disc golf. Yeah. Originally, we were supposed to do 14 rounds of boogie battles and seven monthly matches. And we must have cut it back to five at some point. Doesn't matter. A lot of disc golf's been played. Um, and in a lot of different states. So, I don't know where we did the podcast from last week. Last time it was in Ogden. We were in Ogden. So, we just started the tour. Mm-hmm. So, now we are basically at the end of the tour. Tomorrow, we have De La Viega. And then we have a golf course. I don't know what it is. Boulder Creek. Apparently, it's a hidden gem near Santa Cruz. So, that's what we're playing tomorrow. We got tea time. Um so we flew into Portland, Portland Battles. We did uh, Timber Park and then Milo MacGyver. How do we want to rate everything? Let's do we want to give each a score or do we want to try to rank gonna, them from I think best to worst? Definitely not that. I think we each give out a score, a fun score and a overall like course design score. Because out those, of 10? Because that, that yeah, out of 10. <laughs> Because like okay. fun score doesn't necessarily mean the course is actually like an amazing design. Okay, so Timber Park is our first Bogura battle. Yeah. Fun score, um, eight out of ten. Like safe spot. Okay. I had fun. You're giving your own rankings. Yeah, I went eight oh, out of ten. Oh, you're okay. My fun score for Timber, I'll give that a seven out of ten. Okay. Overall course design, I think it was a bit short. Not a lot of OB. Um. So out of ten. But it was it was very well manicured course, which I think goes into course design. Um, wasn't super super challenging. I'm trying to think through the holes. Had a few that challenged you. I'll go seven eight. That's seven a, five. That's a I'll very go seven five. Score. Seven five. I'll give it a five out of ten. Okay. Um, next we go to Milo. Milo, we played. The, Keep the itinerary up because we'll definitely have trouble recalling this. We played the Milo, uh, whatever the Beaver, the Beaver State, State Fling, Fling layout. layout. Mm-hmm. I think that kind of hurt us a little bit, to be completely honest with you. We Most got a definitely. little, we didn't get lost, but it was hard to get your bearings. So we were actually playing with the assistant TD, very nice guy, um, very helpful for a Beaver State Fling. Um, and he showed us around, but it made it where we were jumping around a lot. The round took four hours out there. Kind of brutal. Um, fun score. What did I give the first one? You gave the first one a, an eight. I think um, seven, eight out of ten. I had slightly less fun. I would give the fun score mm, it's tough because it was it was a long round, but there were some really good holes. I would give it a 7 out of 10. I guess I need to go back to the first park because I need to just take out. I'm thinking of like Timber Park. I'm thinking of what was capable at that property and what they got out of it. Uh-huh. But that shouldn't exactly be how I think about a course design score. No. So I'm going to go back to the first one. I'm going to give it a 6-2 because I got to go overall course design in mm-hmm. the grand scheme of things. Okay. Um, so 6-2 Timber Park. Now we're back to course design at Milo. The problem I had with Milo, at least the layout we played, I felt like it asked me to throw the exact same blind tee shot, for my skill level at least, over and over and over and over again. There's a lot of pushing hyzers There's a lot of hyzers that I needed to flip up a little bit, but not too much, and that should set me up for some type of approach into a green that was guarded. It was, it was a gorgeous course. It was iconic. There was a lot of very cool, cool shots. I was a little underwhelmed in... In comparison to my expectations for the course. Yes. Um, But I need to obviously take that out of it and just go course design. It's tough because I want to know. I don't feel like pros have the same problem we ran into because I feel like if you had more distance, then you wouldn't be throwing the same shot over and over and over. It still has a lot of holes that demanded a right to left shot around a blind corner. It did. I'll, I'll give the course design a six and a half. I think I went. Uh, I think it was a little better than Timber Park. I'll go six nine out of ten. Okay. Six point nine. Next course was. Are we just doing the battles, or we'll do them all? Oh, I think just do the battles. Okay. Um, or next, should we do them all? 
We we'll probably should just do the battles. Let's just do the battles. Next battle, battle course was Ann Morrison Park, and this was in Boise, Boise Idaho. Idaho. So this was a fun, um, very park style course. Um, it, it was definitely worth playing if you're in the Boise area. Yeah. It um it had actually some good challenges. I think they used the, the course very the the park very well. Um, even had some water shots. Now I'm thinking back through it over a little river action. Uh, I think fun wise i had a great time out there i'm gonna go with a, a eight four out of ten fun wise uh yeah pretty fun course i'll give it i'll give it an eight out of ten for fun um course design wise in the grand scheme of of all disc golf courses in general it was definitely a, a well-designed course it was a pretty well-kept course not super demanding um it had a few tough shots one par four that was like a little too demanding. Um, it was just kind of like everyone's going to four it realistically, I felt like, if I'm thinking back correctly. Um, I already forgot what I gave the other courses. You so just I just got to go with, go with feel here. And Morrison Park, I'm going to go with a 6.7 out of 10. Yeah, course design... It was pretty creative, honestly. I'll, I'll give this one a seven and a half. Pretty okay. creative. Um, next was Eagle Island, also in Boise. So this one was in the in the the wet in the the wilderness, if you will. Yeah. Um, very much introduced us to the desert. Um, very sandy, very like not dead grass, but like kind of everything looked dead. Yeah. Um, it's tough to like when I'm thinking of how much fun I had. It's like tough to remove the atmosphere from the course because like I had a great time playing that course, but it was because like the people we played were a lot of fun. The crowd was a lot of fun, Mm -hmm. but like, I don't think if I went out by myself, I would have a ton of fun playing that course. Nope. So I think I'm gonna go more that route. Like the previous parks, I would have fun by myself playing this one. I don't think I would super enjoy, especially if I was off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm gonna go four, nine. I'll give for it, fun scale. Yeah, I'll give it a four and a half. Again, that is if I went out and played by myself. If I'm ranking it based on who was there and how much fun we had playing the battle, it would be yeah. closer to like an eight or nine. Mm-hmm. But I'm just thinking if I went back to that course and played by myself, there could be some nightmare scenarios that, oh, that yeah. would happen out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Um, now, course design-wise, you got to factor that in, especially like if a new player went out there, it could be torture. I mean, there was yeah. hemlock, and we were learning hemlock could kill you 10 different ways. I mostly just thought the design, there were some holes that were designed really well, but then there were a lot of holes that were pretty repetitive, like just crash into trees, basically. A lot of blind shots. I would give the design a 5 out of 10. Yeah, I think I'll go, I'll go, I think I'll go 5.3 out of 10, because there was some really creative hole designs, but there was just so much trouble that was just like, it's not like, Oh no, I'm in trouble. It's like I'm not getting that disc back unless I sacrifice my life. Very much the case. Yeah. Literally your life. If they cut that the course, the wilderness in more, out there wanted to kill you. They Literally. cut that course in more. It could be a, it could be something. Um, okay, now we move on to Utah. Ogden, Utah. And we start baby. with River Park. River Park was not great. To be completely straightforward with you, mm. um, it, it was a lot of blind shots. I had to run up. Um, Again, fantastic gallery, super fun group Probably we played one against. Of the best galleries you had, yeah. but I got to take that out. Yeah. If I went out there by if myself, if you're in the gallery of any of these courses, there's nothing to do. We, we yeah. love meeting every one of you. If I went out there by myself, I don't think I would have a great time. I think I'd have a better time than I did at the last course I just ranked, but I don't remember what I ranked that, so I'm gonna go f- five eight. Uh, yeah, I give this one like a four out of ten. Now, course design wise, pretty similar to the last one in the fact that it was a little repetitive and a lot of blind shots yeah it was repetitive a lot of blind shots nature didn't want to kill you here which was good a couple good holes um a couple good holes no no signature holes though really that like no it wasn't a lot to look at i, I, I would, don't think it filmed very well yeah I, i'll give us a four out of ten for that as well oh you went four out of ten courses i'm yeah i don't know what i went with the last one but i feel like about a five two out yeah. of 10 feels good feels now right. listen things might sound a little grim at this point but we're getting into spicy ones because now we got jolly's ranch jolly's ranch was a great time this, so this is, is a, a park time. style course middle of nowhere realistically um actually it was only like 15 minutes from civilization but it you didn't have cell service it wasn't too crazy bottom of a bunch of like really sick mountains yeah this is where we posted the video of us throwing through the 
Yeah. Tube. Mm-hmm. Us throwing through the tube. Gosh, I'm tired, man. I'm losing it. Um, this was a very, very fun course. Very fun park style course. Some good bomber holes. Grass was a little overgrown in places, but apparently it's not typically like that. There was just a really wet winter, so I don't want to hold that against it too much. Fun scale, 8.5 out of 10. I would give this a 9 out of 10. Yeah. Very fun, very fun course. Course design, I'm going to also give it a 9 out of 10. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I think course design-wise, it's definitely up there. It wasn't repetitive at all. No. Some very well-designed holes, mm-hmm. some creative greens. It used the creek very well that ran through it. Yeah. There was one or two. I, I'm going to dock it a little bit because towards the end, there was one or two holes that I was like, There's a couple fillers. what are we thinking here? Yeah. And um, I'll give it an 8.5. I'll yeah. dock it a little bit. I think I'm going to go 8.2. Eight two it, of the courses we played so far, it is the best course yeah. of the ones on the list so far. Yeah, really um, good. So eight two out of ten feels right. Um, okay, we're gonna do one honorable mention monthly match course because this course was yes. breathtaking, and that is Thunderbird Gardens. I'll give this one a fun rating of ten out of ten and a course design. I'm actually gonna give it a seven out of ten because like for what the property was, it's well, you just can't think what the property was. You gotta go in the grand scheme. I got in trouble with that earlier. Well, that's your criteria. Oh, that's fair. For I'm just saying, like, considering the length of the course, it, I, I'll say that. Considering the length of the course, it was a really well-designed short course. It was very well-designed for a short course, yeah. And um, I don't think a short course makes it a fun, bad course. Fun, I'll agree. Actually, just to be a little different, a little edgy, I'll go 9-9 nine, nine out of 10. You're so edgy. Um, but, yeah, incredible, incredibly fun course. It was, I mean, it felt like illegal to be playing where we were playing. It was pretty um, amazing. Course design wise, only only problem is it was short, and there was also some chances of your disc going down literal canyons. Not too bad though, only a few holes. Um, so I'll go eight eight. Course design okay. wise, really good course. Very uh, good course. Okay, on to Vegas. Wild horse. Wild horse. Fun. Ten out of ten. You ten out of ten. Fun. This course, I'll give this one a ten out of ten for fun. We're gonna park would, here for a I'll second. I'll give it a ten out of ten for design. Okay, well let's not. I'm, yeah, I'm doing it. Well, 10 out of 10 means there can't be a better course ever. On this list? I mean, I, I Oh, just, we're going in the scope of this list. For me, I'm, that's what I'm doing. Okay. We are on two completely different scales. That's okay. Okay. Because I'm going... I'm Our going, scales are never going to be the same. We don't think the same. Well, I'm going in the grand scheme of like all course design. And so I'll, there will never be a 10 out of 10. That's because fine. that would mean there would... Ne- I don't think there can ever be a perfect course. Well, I'll say this right now. I have played a lot of the so-called best courses in the country at the, up to this point. This is better. I uh, I would agree. I agree so with that statement. I'm, I'm okay with making it a 10 for right um, now. So fun ranking 10 I out of 10. I can change my ratings. Fun ranking 10 out of 10 for sure. Um, So first off, this course, golf. it's on a golf course. It's where LVC is. We got to play the end of a course. Pretty much the whole end of a course. We played a few of, I think it was the infinite holes or mm-hmm. millennium holes to begin. And then the whole end of a course. Definitely a sick video. You're not going to miss. Um, we were treated so well out here which immediately bumped up how we felt about the course but it wasn't just us it was disc golf in general we were in good spirits like when you when you drive onto the property this is this is freaking june okay lvc happened back in february they still have innova flags up the whole way into the property not like feather flags but like like on the like this isn't like this isn't like a golf course like a lot of golf courses you see putting in disc golf courses are like not really doing so hot with the golf situation so like let's try disc golf this is a really nice golf course yeah it was incredible golf really nice and so pulling into the property first thing we noticed was that then you go into the pro shop and they like tastefully integrated disc golf into their pro shop yeah, um, you can buy Terex shoes. You could there. buy disc golf shoes right <laughs> like, next to the golf what? shoes. They had a nice selection of discs. Um, the food was extremely reasonably priced. Like Heck I got yeah. four chicken tenders <laughs> and fries, and it was like ten bucks. Unreal. Yeah. Um, which especially, I mean, we've been on the West Coast for two weeks. I don't think I need to tell you four chicken tenders and your arm for a bunch that. of fries for ten bucks is pretty unreal. Um, then the let's get to the actual golf course. First off, golf carts fifteen bucks for a round. We've played some pay to play courses and again we've played pay to play courses where we don't expect anything ever for free when we show up we're there to film we're there to do our job but we've had we've played pay to play courses that they've made uh, each of us and the battle people we're playing pay 25 bucks a head plus pay 15 dollars for connor to walk with us to film so we've paid 115 dollars for an experience that was well well worse than what we got at wild horse which 15 bucks a head golf cart that's what if you walk onto the property, that's your price. Yeah. They let us play for free. 
um, which was always extremely grateful for. Yeah. Um, and they went above and beyond. They even like, now this isn't typical, but they even moved the women's golf weekly that goes on there to the other side of the course so that we could play the end of a course that morning. It was crazy. It was incredible. Like we yeah. typically, you've probably experienced this as a disc golfer walking onto a golf course. You're like a hostile. You're the outsider. You are like, they don't really want you to be there. It was just like the owners struggling a little bit. So they're like, oh, let's try this Frisbee thing. But then the whole, all the golf workers are like, frick these Frisbee guys. Yeah. That was not this con- scenario. No. John Waddington, um, that was my contact there. I didn't even realize this until we got there, but he's literally the GM of the course and he was just treated us so nicely and 15 bucks out there. And I don't think a lot of people maybe realize that you can play the course out there any time of the year. It's always in, um, and 15 bucks out there and you're going to be playing a perfectly manicured property because they obviously have it completely in shape for golf. So we're talking about, you know, irrigated fairways, um, just like everything is cut super nicely. Like, I mean, just like throwing disc golf shots on those perfectly manicured fairways and it's having unreal. your run ups like perfect spots, like yeah, it's a great time. So yeah, cannot hey. say enough about the uh-huh. positive experience. Now there. let's get to the course designs. So ten out of ten, fun rating. Period. Um, I would go back out there every day if I could. Yeah. Course design wise, it's gonna be well up there as well. What they did here, it it does not come through on camera how much it challenges you each and every shot it is so yeah so well thought out the greens to where are so even creative. the simplest upshot it, it makes you sweat yeah um every hole you had to think through every shot you were golfing out there you were playing golf out there it was incredible like you it wasn't just okay well it's a golf course so just chuck it down the fairway and throw a hyzer here and then another easy hyzer and tap out from a birdie no you were constantly thinking through what angle you got to land a disc on because it's on a hill and then there's hazards really close to the basket that make you think like I can't swing it too far wide or short or like there's a drop off to OB right behind the basket like every single shot challenged you in a different way I never felt like oh I mean sure if you're asking for big distance I have a certain disc I'm gonna do that with but a lot of times it was like I need to make sure this goes more right this time or more left I never felt like I was being asked to throw the same shot over and over which is very typical of golf course designs yeah and in general I just felt like this was one of the best disc golf courses I'd ever played um and so I'm gonna have to give it a nine six out of ten I don't think it gets much better than that um, it was like I've played some into great a portal into the future. I've, yeah, I've played some great disc golf courses, and um, this one, I think it's safe to say, I think this is the best designed, manicured, and respected as as in the players being respected when you're out there. Disc golf course I've ever played. So it's pretty amazing. It doesn't, uh, unfortunately, not to spoil the rest of the list. It doesn't get better than that. Yeah, so. that was pretty incredible. Um, our next course in Vegas we played was Picole Ranch. It was uh, kind of a private neighborhood park. Um, a really beautifully manicured park. Oh, okay, I remember this one now. Um, fun course, kind of, yeah, pretty fun. I would give this a fun rating, like I think I'll give this a fun rating of like an eight. Yeah, because like it is a fun course. There's a lot of low ceilings, but because it's really well manicured and it's not super long, like I would enjoy going to play. That I think course. I'm gonna go seven five okay. only because it is a. It seemed to be a rather busy. Well, it walking for, path it wasn't for us we were there at a very like random <laughs> yeah, time we didn't have a problem with it but, but i could see where things could get like very annoying to play there quickly so i'm gonna sure. go seven five just for that that reason course, because you were going o- o- over or around a lot of walking paths and yeah. where the air you were playing was very tight so there there wasn't really an option of like yeah getting it away from the walking path course design i'll give them some props because they made a course in a very tiny like narrow park area um Nothing crazy creative going on, though. They mostly just put baskets on the other side of trees, and it's a lot of, like, pick-your-line situations, so I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Yeah, I get, I'll go I'll go 5-1 or 5-2 out of 10. It wasn't Nothing it wasn't crazy. anything to write home about. It's a fun course if you're in the area. It's definitely worth playing, but uh, I think that some of the shots they were asking you just weren't possible. So then we go on to Arizona. This was probably our most anticipated stop because the lineup was Fountain Hills and Vista. Uh, so we start at Fountain Hills. Fun rating at Fountain Hills. I will give this fun rating a 9 out of 10. I actually give it a 9.5 out of 10 because I 
would have a it's a it's an open enough course with some really good views that you would just have a blast playing this course anytime like in my opinion yeah, I'll go nine five out yeah. of ten. Yeah, it was, um, it, was a, it was a good time. I you, think the you, only way you're not having fun is if you don't have enough dis- distance, distance to get over yeah. the water. But I, I would have a blast playing there anytime. Um, and then, and it's a beautiful park as well. And then course design, nothing crazy creative. Uh, they don't have a ton to work with on that property. That you literally play just around the lake. Um, but there are some really cool holes that take advantage of some cool spots. So I'll give it a I'll give it a seven out of ten. Yeah, uh, first off, incredible course. Incredible course design, a ton of fun. Not good enough for the Pro Tour. Just yeah. simply... Too many hyzers. Simply too easy for the pros. Yeah. Um, Trevor and I played out there, and literally the only thing that held us back distance. from being able to reach was just like, okay, but if I had 50 more feet of distance, this hole would be so easy. Yeah. Um, and the pros, spoiler alert, the pros throw more than 50 feet farther than us. Yep. And it was interesting because, like, a lot of the holes, like, about half the holes seemed farther than they were on camera, and half the holes seemed a lot shorter than they were on camera. Yeah. Um, so that was interesting out there. Um, but I do want to just mention that, like, mm-hmm. this course was great. I think it's perfect for the all-star event. I know it's not there anymore, but, like, an exhibition event like that where it can still be a part, but the pro tour can't go back there. Um not to mention how busy the park is and i don't think they can shut it down but course design wise um i think it was pretty creative with the hillsides and the water in play um i'll go i'll go seven four out of ten um because i think it's up there it's one of the better courses we've played so far really fun um but when you take out the scenery and the iconness of the course the iconicness of the course um, and just get to the course design part. I think mid sevens is where it, where I'd put it. And then we go on to Vista del Camino, um, another really good time. I would give the fun rating on this course a nine out of ten. Well, first off, this, and I think it's probably safe to say it's going to be by far our biggest gallery for a billiard battle ever. Yeah, Vista was crazy. Um, a lot of people there. People turned up. It was awesome. Also, we played the uh, XL layout at Vista. Yeah, Vista XL. And I would give um, it, I would give it a nine out of ten for fun. Fun, yeah, I'll, sure, I'll go in that same ballpark. Fun I'll go course. nine out of ten as Design, well. Design, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it, it is a, I think a little bit better design course maybe than Fountain. The tough part but is the we didn't get is to play. No OB. We didn't get to play with the OB. Right, I think yeah. with the OB up, it is a way better course. I think without the OB, it's still fun, but like, it's, it would be a lot more fun for me at least with the OB, like the challenge there. Um, so because we played it without the OB. Like I would give the course design. I it's just, you know it's designed with the OB. This XL layout that we played is designed with OB and to be there. Mm-hmm. And I've seen that enough times. And now that I've played it as well, like I can I could safely give it like an eight out of ten. Yeah, it's a pretty well designed course. Even without the OB, it played plenty challenging. It played pretty yeah because uh, it's far. Good. It is a lot closer to tour quality than. Fountain Hills. Yeah. Um. I still think even with the OB, it's not quite. There's still some gimmies out there because there's still yeah. just too many and just some easy par fours holes. That are way too easy. But then there's and some that's like the legit is, holes too. Yeah. There's some par fours that again challenged Trevor and I, but had we had 50 more feet of distance, the challenge is gone. Yes. Um. And so we every with, hole they were like, oh yeah, OB or AB to this hole, and we're like, this is 700 feet. <laughs> yeah. Um. The OB I definitely think would help. I think I'll go. It was definitely better than Fountain. Um, I'll go 8.2 8. out okay. of 10. It was a very well-designed course, very well thought out, not quite tour level. All right, and that brings us to today uh, in California. California. And we started at La Mirada. Now, unfortunately, we were only able to play just the front course at La Mirada. Yeah, which we couldn't is, play the combo, Wombo. There wasn't really anything going on in Disc. It was all like unavailable at the layout. So what the heck, Udisc? Uh, or well, not Udisc. Whoever's running the course out there. I guess the pins weren't even in place. Um, yeah, I don't really know what's going but on. But that being said, the park is still really nice. Um, and fun factor, because like we love park style courses. So like fun factor, I I would give this an eight point five. Like it's a you have a fun time at this course. Yeah, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna have a great time. Yeah. Apparently, more people like the back course because they're scared of the water. I didn't really think the water came into play water, too much. I was kind of confused by that. Maybe came into play on one hole. Well, and you mo- have to throw multiple a bad people shot. told us like, yeah, I'll, we all play the back course because we don't want to throw anything in the water. Yeah. And I, I was like, I was expecting to throw over the water at some point. We never did. 
Yeah. Um, but it was still a ton of fun. Enough OB that you like have to think about it, but not enough to really come into play. Um, mm-hmm. Park style course. I'll go eight three out of ten for fun. Yeah. Course design on this one, um, fine. I, there were, it wasn't repetitive. There were some good holes, some like good uses of mandos to force some creative shots. Yeah, I would give us a seven point five. It's a pretty well designed course. Yeah, I think it was. It wasn't too repetitive, um, which I think is what I really yeah. dot courses for. Um, it was short, yeah. but it had a few. It was all par threes, but it had a few like four hundred plus foot par threes. I think I'll go six nine, six point okay. nine on my course design. And then the final course we played so far um, is Oak Grove, the original disc golf course. OG. OG. Um, I would get this this course like we we went to Oak Grove more so because it's the first course, not really. Yeah, it's the first disc golf course ever. Like it was the first put in with first tone permanent poles. public disc golf course ever. Yes, we met the guy who like helped put it in today. It was yeah, cool. PJ number sixty seven, Mister yeah. Mark. Mark, yeah, um, him and his wife here. I I want I it's hard to take because if we take away, we had one of the cl- the VP of the club with us, Kevin, super super nice guy. Super helpful. We take him away. We take getting to meet Mark and hearing a lot of history of the sport away. Mm-hmm. And we just are at the course. Not a great course. Oh sure, no, no, no. yeah. I'm yeah. saying fun wise. I'm yeah, gonna I think add, it would be it would be tough. I'm gonna add to that to my fun rating, like the the history part, because like a lot of people that were would go to a lot of people that would care about our fun rating are probably gonna think about like your first time going there or if, if I were to go visit there yeah and it being that it is historic you will have like add a little more fun to it so I'll give it a, I'll give this course a fun rating of like a seven yeah okay I can I can get like it was I can a, get it, on it was a good time now if you happen to have if you have the tour guide if you situation happen to have the had, tour guide situation like we have it's a 5. ten out of ten I had a blast out there because it was very cool like the two meter rule, for instance, playing that course, I can see why they came up with the idea for the two meter rule. Yeah, was I was a, like, yeah, no, this makes sense. If this was, was cool the course, of history. if this was the course I played all the time, I can see it. You can just chuck up in that tree. Yeah, and yeah, if your buddy's chucking in that tree every time, you're gonna get pissed if he has a birdie putt for two when you throw yeah. the correct line. You don't. Course design was um, actually pretty good. Yeah, so I don't know. We didn't get to play the full layout because there was a camp going yeah. on there, so they had to like remove a few holes. Um, but we were still able to get a lot of them in. It was actually pretty decent. Like the it it wasn't a pretty park, so like that it, it's tough for me to like okay like let me remove that because like it wasn't a very beautiful park. Like we'd have been at La Mirada that morning, much more beautiful park. Um, so I'll give it a seven point five though for course design because there were some pretty good shots and a pretty good variety of shots. Yeah, again, it doesn't it didn't ask you to repeat. Like I wasn't going back to the same disc over and over and over. Yeah. Um, or if I did, I was throwing it on different angles. Uh, cause I threw my MD3 a lot, but I was throwing, I threw it on Heiser and Heiser flat. I threw it a lot of different ways. Um, it did ask you to open up a little bit. Um, there's a few, I think there's a hole over 400 feet. Yeah. It, it had some very unique lines. We didn't get to play the spider tree. It's a little sad about that, but, um, course design, I'll, I'll go, I'll go seven, three in the grand scheme of courses. Um, I think it was a, about as good as you can do with that property though yeah i don't think you could do much better right it's not a fantastic Uh, property and again you're not going there to play the best disc golf course you've ever seen you're going there because it's it's the history of the sport they even have it's called the iron maiden it's like a a sculpture that was built in honor of like the first disc golf basket and stuff um so there's a lot of cool history they actually just got some funding apparently to redo tees put some new um T signs in, uh, fix up some of the baskets, and even put a like kiosk that'll have like some of the history of the game when you first show up. Yeah, that'd be super cool. So that'll up the fun scale. Also, if you've ever watched the Wintertime Open, like I have a bajillion times, then it was a very recognizable course. Pretty much every hole, I was like, oh, this isn't where the pin is. I recognize. I remember being over here, but like I knew exactly what I was playing. Um, so that was fun too. I liked I liked experiencing that. I'm ex- I'm expecting that's what day law will be like a lot tomorrow. Yeah. So, all right, let's wrap it up with Trevor's trivia. Well, first before that, we're gonna talk a little bit about our presenting sponsors, Flippy Disc Golf. 
Um, Flippy are one of the huge reasons that we're out here on this tour right now. If you haven't seen them before, they do all kinds of disc golf apparel. We've been wearing their stuff this entire trip. They hooked us up. Um, yeah, Hunter's wearing one of the t-shirts, as am I right now. Uh, but they do a lot of like dry fit stuff that's perfect for disc golf. If you checked out Flippy way back in the past, they used to use a different material, but now they're rocking with this new Soul Pro. Yeah, their older material I would describe as a little bit more like cotton performance. So if yeah. that sounds like what you have, you don't have their new stuff. Yeah, now they have a new Soul Pro material that is much more of a traditional dry fit. It's very premium dry fit. Um, they do a lot of cool designs. They do a. We actually have our own collection on the site. You can check out the link in the description. We have our own collection on the site. Uh, but that are designs that we kind of did West Coast inspired and we worked with Aaron the owner um, to kind of create things that we liked and yeah they've been they've been great so make sure to check out uh, Flippy for all your apparel needs uh, we got to meet Aaron out here on the trip Aaron's the man very cool guy so that was really nice um, but yeah make sure to check that out and now I will get into my trivias yeah highly recommend the polos yeah if you're polos looking for a are, good polo for your they're tournament so good Pick up one of our Foundation Disc Golf curated polos. Okay. So, uh, PDJ uh, US Ams just went down. Yes. Um, shout out to Ryan Mulder. He won MA1. Young kid. I'm pretty sure he's like 15, um, if I'm not mistaken. One by seven. Good absolute beast. What do you rate? 1056, 1026 for the first couple rounds. That's pretty good. Um, anyway, so that, that my question here, our Trevor's trivia is... Did I, did I screenshot it? Maybe not. Here we go. My, we got. There's quite a few recognizable names that were also USAM champions. Mm -hmm. So I want to see how many past champions that you can name that are now on the tour. And this would just be uh, MPO. Past USAM champions. Honestly, just if you can just. Yeah. I think Paul Ulibarri won. He's not on this list. Never mind. So he I came in second. Um, I th think Paul Macbeth won. Also not on this list. He must have also come in second. <laughs> Ricky Wysocki, then. Mm -mm, he, Ricky lost to somebody who is on this list that I know. You also know. Is a, You can actually find coverage of this out there. The guy that Ricky lost to, everybody thought was going to be like the next. David Wiggins Jr.? Yep. Oh, I didn't he, realize he beat Rick. He beat Rick at the toboggan course. Pretty electric. Um, all right, that might be the only one I'm gonna get. No, big you germ. Should, you should, mm -mm. you should definitely be able to name one other. Nope. I don't. I've never really paid attention to USAMs because, like, USAM and US Worlds. I know there's US Worlds well, course or the, AM this Worlds one guy, course. This one guy you would know has won both of them, and he won them in the same year. AM Worlds. Gannon yeah, Burr. I think he was the only one. No. Did Gannon Burr win USAMs? No. Like what the frick? I don't know, man. This 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 person was the first person to ever do this. I don't know that anybody else has done it since. To win both of them in the same year? Yeah. Happened in 2015, I believe. The frick if yeah, I know. I just I was I, I wasn't even disc, playing disc golf yet. I have yet. a disc that commemorates it in my bag. Anthony Barella? Yeah. He won with that sick shot down that giant hill. It beat Isaac McDonald, man. Okay, I did see that coverage. I yeah. remember I almost named Isaac McDonald, but I was like, that guy's not touring. <laughs> yeah. There okay, there there are other recognizable names on this list. Um, I've guessed all the ones I could think of. Okay, well, you don't know nearly as many as I thought. I also thought you may have just seen I've this never post. watched USAMs. <sighs> I don't, I don't really pay attention to to amateur disc golf that well, much, other, other than college disc golf. Other notable names on this list. Ben Calloway. Nope. Colton Montgomery, no clue. Gavin Rathbun, wow. Kyle Klein, and Robert Burge. Robert Burge, I almost guessed, but I was like, I know he was like really good at nationals. I don't know if he won USAMs. Yeah, I'm very surprised that I didn't know any of those. That Macbeth and um, I, Paul I mean, came in. I'll tell you this much: if PDGA put out this graphic and didn't, and like those guys had one and they didn't put him on the no, list, no, they probably reason. hadn't. I was throwing shots at the dark. Because as soon as you brought that question up, I'm like, I'm not gonna know. Any I mean, of this. I know for I know for a fact that Wiggins beat Ricky when Ricky was like at the height of his am, and in the coverage they're like, both these guys are turning pro next year, and uh, the rest of the infield will probably be happy for that. And David Wiggins is throwing like yeah, I've never watched. I've never watched that. It's like the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I watched the AB one. That I think that's the only USAMs I ever watched. It's electric. 
when I got into disc golf, there was just so might, much. Um, I don't know. See, here's the thing: is that coverage I was just mentioning that might have been Worlds. That might have not even been Am. Am disco. So Paul came in second at Amateur Worlds mm. in 2007. Who you lose to? To Greg Schwartz. And who's that guy? That's what I'm saying. Is that guy rated not? What is he rated? He was now? rated 936. Is back he still then? a PDJ? Like I love doing this little game. Nope. Doesn't even have a membership anymore. Career earnings were five thousand dollars. But he'll always have that that he beat Paul McBeth. One thing that was pretty cool is we went to the Huntington Beach course. Uh, we had a little event there where, and that's where Paul kind of cut his teeth. That's where he grew up, and they have like a pro shop there, and it has like former Huntington Beach players that are world champions or whatever. And it's just, there's like a couple other people, and there's just Paul's name a bunch of times. They had it updated as of 2021 too. Pretty electric. Or 2022, I mean. Um, okay, let's look at Yuli. I thought Yuli won some AM event. No, oh, he won Am Worlds. Am Worlds. Okay, so I was thinking Am Worlds. <laughs> Yuli has the Am Worlds course. Not many have the the Am World Slam. I, does Big Germ <laughs> have the Am World? The Am Gram Slam. I think Germ got. Um, I think he came in second, because the um, the like running joke is like people who won Am Worlds never go on to win a lot, in the pro scene. Well, like on the touring pro scene. Dang. It's like the Am World course curse. Um, let's see here, Big Germ. I think he did something in Am, but I could be wrong. It was a long time ago. Yeah, he won Am Worlds. There you go. He did. There you go. There you go. So I was just thinking Am Worlds. Am Worlds and US Ams are the same in my head. Fair enough. Um, well, shout out who won Am Worlds or US Ams right then? Was Mulder. What was his first name? Ryan. Ryan Mulder. C- congrats, Ryan Mulder. US Ams is a, a big accomplishment because I know it's it's kind of tough to qualify for points wise and stuff. I think I qualified for it one year, but I wasn't making the trip up to Michigan. Well, also you have to kind of like commit to keeping your Am status as well. Mm-hmm. That's honestly mm-hmm. the hardest thing because a lot of these guys that win these Am tournaments are they like so are staying, dirty and they they're could, staying Am <laughs> just to win they, US Am. Right, like they could. I mean, he's nine ninety rated. He could make a few thousand dollars yeah. a year. Because that's what, like you. There were cashing. players when um, I decided to cash because I was like looking at Am Worlds and US Ams, and what I realized was like there were so many guys that were staying Am just because they wanted to win Am Worlds US Ams, yeah. and I was like. That's too much pressure. Yeah. You, like, well, play open and turn yeah. down cash for an a lot, entire year. They'll be like, all right, this is my last year. Like, I'm going to stay in. Yeah, and it's like, if I don't... Gosh. Because if you if you show up to that event and you lose, you probably won 10 to 15 MPO events on your home course, like, home courses. You probably turn down, like, a few grand Yeah, to play US Ams, they'll and then you like, lose it, and you're like... be like, all those discs you got you're instead. Like, well, crap. <laughs> like, gosh darn it. Yeah. Which, I guess, if you, sometimes if you... If you take the AM cash and you sell the discs. I wonder what AM has... Yeah, there's definitely a way around it. I wonder what AM has turned down the most cash in PDGA history. I would love to know that stat. Stat Mando, if you're listening, I know we flamed you earlier for the strength of schedule thing. You can make it up. You can make it up to us by figuring out who's turned down the most cash ever. Why do I feel like... Didn't someone like get pretty high at a pro tour and was going to say about turning down cash like imagine imagine if an am won a pro tour in turn or a major or a major and turn down the cash like 10 grand like no i want to win am worlds <laughs> <laughs> a major i don't think they would i don't think they i could see the lead series either. i could see a silver event being just, as high as someone would turn down yeah a few grand <laughs> You gotta really care about that Am World. Well, like if Am Worlds is the ne- if, if Am Worlds is next week, <laughs> I'm signed up. I'm playing just Silver Event rolls into town. I play it. I win. You win like three grand. Uh, well, but you gotta think of what winning Am Worlds could mean for you, versus just like cashing in a Silver Event. No, uh, no, I'm saying you win the Silver Event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like winning the Silver Event does a lot more for you than being an Am World champion. Uh, nobody, mm. nobody. Who won last year's Am Worlds? Who won two Silver Events ago? I mean, I could, I could probably figure that out if you No, I guess. Time. Go ahead. Two silver events ago? I don't even know what the tournament was. It was Cascade, wasn't it? And, I didn't, that and was before the last that, one. it was Beaver State. Was that? Is that right? Yeah. Who won Beaver State? Beaver State was won by... Give me a second. I know that uh, Jen Allen won FPO. Yeah. And MPO was won by... Eagle McMahon. Yeah, there you go. See? 
That was two events ago versus last year's AM World. But you were the one that made that argument. Yeah, I was just Not saying. Me. It was that, that hard to come up This guy's crazy. With. He literally, it you draw an argument on with. me, and then you proof, like, what the Cascade? heck? Who won Cascade? You're a gaslighter, dude. Oh, it should, it should be very easy to remember, too. So, who won the, what was the second silver event of the year? You made the argument, and then you literally disproved yourself. Who won yourself. Lake Marshall? Last year? Luke Sampson. Was that right? Yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah, you made the argument. I was just saying. Leave me out of this, dude. Two events ago should be a lot easier to remember for Silver Event. The, and it was Eagle the McMahon, bottom line his only is, win. The bottom line is if you win Amworlds, you get, like, one little post from PDG. But you get sponsored. Yeah, if you win a Silver Event you're not sponsored, you're also getting sponsored. Come on now. You just hate Silver Events, but you... I think I would rather have an Amworld... T- I would actually... Actually, I can... I can confidently say I'd rather have an AM World title than a silver event I win. win. I, I wouldn't rather have a USAM title than a silver event. A silver event win. win probably means that you beat a handful of the top players. It could in the mean world. it could mean you beat no one. There's never been a there's never been Lake a silver Marshall. event. You beat Chris Dickerson. You that's you, what, where do you put him in your world ranking right now? That doesn't at the time he was top five. <laughs> you're you're oh times. my goodness. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm done with this podcast. You're ridiculous. I would rather have an AM World title. The title sounds cool. I wouldn't rather have a USAM. But like USAM I'd rather that, have it's a like, silver oh, sick. Event. You beat all the AMs versus you beat the pro field with good pros in it. Sometimes. At least one or two every time. That would be an interesting strength of field. Go AM Worlds to a silver event. Can wouldn't, we do that? It sure wouldn't be interesting. The silver event would have a much higher strength of but field. But like it might be closer than we think. Mm-mm. It could be. That USAM, the highest rated player, was probably like 990. USAM, I'm fully on the same page as you. So, but AM Worlds, I'm just curious. <laughs> okay. There's no, Statman doesn't have AM, AM ones. Okay, good. Something to think about. Mm-mm. You're I too, would take an Amworld title. To sleep. I do need to go to I sleep. I believe you. I think most people listen. Comment down below. Actually, that'd be a fun way to end it out. Mm-hmm. Comment down below if you'd rather have an amateur. That's actually a good tweet. Probably not for me because would people would think. Would you rather win Amworlds or a Silver Series event? Yeah, that's I a good. Would. That's a good. I think that's a good. You should tweet it because I can't tweet it because it has Silver event in it. So it's immediately a hot button topic for me and people are going to answer biasly. But that's a good tweet. Okay. Cuz I don't know. I think I think it'd be a pretty split decision. I I mean, I it Cuz one year world here's champ. The thing. I I don't know how people are going to One year silver event. Right. I don't know how people are going to interpret it because like world title sounds great until you realize like do you think that the silver event is a more impressive win? Regardless of, because this, well, I think you have to say yes. The strength of the field is just so much better. It's more impressive, but I'm, I'm saying like what it does for a career, I think, mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things, is less than what AM is World. It, why? Is AM World the biggest <laughs> win Eulabar has ever had? <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> That's ruthless. That's a question. I, I don't know. I don't think so. I think he's won some other things. A couple things. All right. Well, there you go. You comment that below. Comment okay. down below. Would you rather have a an amateur world title or a silver event title? You can't pick your silver event. It's randomly assigned to you because obviously you could pick like a stacked field silver event. And sure, it's basically like winning a pro tour. But would you rather have a silver event title or am world title? That's how we're going to end up the podcast. Um, we'll talk to you again next week when we wrap up DDL.